afternoon from sunny Lagos. Um, I've been here for three weeks tomorrow and this is the first full day of sunshine we've had. Uh, all day today we've been running on solar even though Nepa is present. Uh, I figured we'll take full advantage of the sun and we're currently producing more energy than we actually are consuming so it's going to waste. So when this video is done I'm going to put the fans back on, I'm going to put the lights back on, plug in my laptop so I can burn off that excess electricity we're making. Today, we're making a video that will answer some questions a friend had called and asked me this morning. She goes, Christopher, why aren't you getting more traction? Why aren't more people buying solar? I also had a, I also had a um, John Paul Iwoha of smallstarter.com come to visit us at a client location and he himself couldn't wrap his head around why people weren't adopting solar more. Um, and I told him it had to do with past experiences, they've not been very good, and uh, some misconceptions and myths people have about solar. So today, we'll address two of them. Okay, there are so many. I have posted them on Naira Land as well. You'll see this on our Facebook page. You'll see this on our company page, www.awpsrenewableenergy.com. And... Um, you will, you will have questions and we'll give you answers as to why we believe people have struggled with adopting solar. Uh, the first experience, the f most common experience they've had has been with inverters, which is what you see behind us. Every system, whether it's solar or whether it's in your house, has an inverter. Uh, the inverters installed in Nigeria are really UPS systems that um, take the power from the batteries, convert it from DC into AC, to provide electricity to you while, when there is no network. Our system here is more complicated. It can do a variety of things that our traditional inverters cannot do. So let's talk about inverters. Um, we've heard inverters catch on fire, they've burned people's houses down, uh, they run hot. Well, they are, all that is correct. People have had their houses burned down, uh, people have had inverters catch on fire, a lot of our property has been destroyed. Thankfully, so far, we've not heard of anyone that got killed, um, like you hear from generators. Well, why do inverters fail, or why do we have fires? Well, two reasons. One, you bought a substandard product. There, is a, there are lots of inverters in the market today. Uh, they range in price from as little as 20,000 Naira, and you could pay more than a million Naira for an inverter. Well, I gave someone an example as to differences, and this applies to both batteries and your inverters. Um, in the 80s, I remember I came to visit Nigeria in the 80s and everybody was getting excited about two cars. One was called the Daewoo Rasa, Racer, but they said it was Daewoo Rasa, and the other was the Hyundai Excel. My sister had one. And my mom at the time had a Mercedes Benz, the body, a 1980s Mercedes Benz. And today, in the streets of Lagos, you'll be lucky if you find a Hyundai Excel or a Daewoo Racer but you could still see that Mercedes-Benz out there in Nigeria running as it ran 20, 30, 40 years ago. Okay, so you buy good quality and it lasts. Um, yes, the Hyundai did exactly what the Mercedes did. They took it from point A to point B. Uh, you arrived there, probably got a little better fuel economy, but at the end of the day, 10 years later, 15 years later, it didn't exist. It fell apart. And that's the same thing, no difference from an inverter. So when you're going to purchase an inverter, buy it's critical you buy good quality price shouldn't be the determinant buy names that you've heard of buy names from manufacturers that have been doing this for a while it's not one it's not a trading company that woke up one day and decided they want to sell inverters and they make it from substandard substandard parts and some guy in a lab who thinks he's a genius goes out and buys it and he's selling it to you buy quality okay that's one number two the guy who installs it is just as important as, the, as what you buy. It's like you taking your car to a roadside mechanic, the car was running before you got there, and then on your way, on your way home the engine falls out. It's no different. The guy who is doing the installation is critical that he pays attention to things as, crit as little as the size of the wire. People will tell you, oh, guy, I go use 20 mm. No, 20 mm on 12 volts is a recipe for a fire. Okay? The lower the voltage, the thicker the cables. Okay, the longer the distance between the battery and the inverter, the thicker the cables. Okay, it's very simple, it's not rocket science. Read the manual, it tells you what to do. 
but this part is the last part on I'll talk about on that on um, installations and inverters. You have to make sure that they put a fuse between the battery and the inverter. Behind me, I have fusing and I have a a disconnect. Why is it critical? I'll give you an example. A week and a half ago, I came in. I have been using um, my the fridge, pumping water, and the microwave on the system back here. And it's been fine. So I decided that I wanted to use an electric kettle. Never thought an electric kettle could be a problem. Plug in the electric kettle and I could hear the inverter making a lot of sounds. You know, it was like trying to cool itself down. I come here and I take a look and the battery had gone from 26.6 volts to 23 volts. In terms of amps, that was a ridiculous amount of amps being drawn out of our inverter. Over 100 amps for you to draw the battery down that quickly. So guess what happened? The battery, start, the wire started to get hot, and eventually it tripped the fuse. Okay, it actually burnt the fuse. It was a really nasty smell. But guess what that saved us? It saved us from a fire. The minute the fuse blew, there was no, there was nothing going between the battery and the inverter anymore. And that, that was critical. A fuse between your battery and your inverter is very important. Now the second thing I hear, um, the batteries on inverters don't last, so we budget that every year, every year and a half we're going to be replacing batteries. And that has been the experience for a lot of people and initially that was our experience as well. So what have we done differently? Well, we've learned how to size our system. We also learned that the, AG, the gel batteries do not work for us and AGMs don't necessarily, necessarily work for us because Lagos, as you can see, the last few days has been very cloudy. In fact, in the last week, in the last two weeks I've been here, today is the first day we've had the sun from this morning till this time about, it's about 3, 4 o'clock now. And by 7 o'clock my charge controller was on. On the normal days, nine, by 9 a.m. my charge controller is still sleeping because there's not enough sun enough light outside to trigger it to charge my battery. So, the battery type is critical and sizing it is very important. So what battery type do I use? I use flooded batteries. Um, I use either the Trojan or the Hopiki. Some people say it's Hopek because it's German. I say Hopiki because, you know, in America we like to pronounce things however we like and we expect the rest of the world to follow. Okay, I use 6 volt batteries or 2 volt batteries. Very rarely would I use 12 volts, and when I do, is because the, it's a certain application and the customer has cost constraints. And when we do 12 volt batteries, they are still flooded Trojan batteries. Okay? I'll explain to you the logic behind 6, 12, and 2 volts. A battery is a lead plate. The bigger the lead plate, the better the battery. So you have a 12 volt space, you have a space that has 12 volts, so it's 6 cells. Each cell is about this small. Okay, so what does that mean? The amount of times you could charge and discharge them is not as much as you having a 6 volt battery, same space, and 3 cells. Now you have bigger cells. And then the same space, but it's one single 2 volt cell. That's even more lead. And if you look at the duty cycles of the first one, the second and the third, there's as much, as, uh, there's as much of it as a 2000 cycle difference. So each cycle is when you charge and discharge it. That's what your cycle is. So you look at a battery with 3,000 and a battery with less than 1,000. You know the one with 3,000 will last longer than the one with less than 1,000. But something people do in Nigeria, that's our charge controller trying to burn up the excess um, power it's making. So something else people do in Nigeria that I find um, a little distressing is that they completely discharge the battery and then they recharge it. Lead acid batteries hate being discharged. You cannot completely discharge a lead acid battery. When you do, you shorten the life by at least 20 to 30 percent. So it's critical that when the guy sizes your system for you, that he gives you double what you use. People come in and they go, okay, Olga, uh, you do 10 kVA, we'll give you eight batteries. Totally meaningless statement because they have no idea what your usage, usage is. How do you determine your usage? So look at this fridge right here. This fridge uses about 250 watts, okay? If I leave it on for 24 hours a day, it's 250 times 24. That's the watt hours. Now I know how much I consume. I look at all my appliances, I do that, and then I divide that by my system voltage. In this system here is 24 volts, 
are divided by 24 volts and that's how much in amp hours I use every day. Now to size the system correctly, I have to double that number so that I only discharge the battery to 50%. So it's critical that the battery be sized properly. Now a third component that I, I'm going to discuss another time is charging them. Your, your sealed battery due to your gel and AGM have to see 29 volts on the 24 volt system every day or 13, call it 14 volts on a 12 volt system and 58 volts on a 58 volts on a 48 volt system. They have to see that every day, they don't see that every day, the battery fails. They need to be properly charged and they need to not be completely discharged. Okay, I use flooded batteries because when I don't properly, they, they don't see it every day. They, as long as I see it twice a week, the battery is fine. So that's it on um, some of the myths that people have regarding solar. Battery sizing and inverters that catch fire. Okay, thank you so much for watching. This is Christopher with AWPS Renewable Energy, your home for solar power in Nigeria.